What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Jake, and I thought it would be cool to start sharing little tidbits of information about programming for the web. Um, and today, I'm going to get into the Web Audio API and using Tone.js to do that. Uh, I don't really have a plan here, so uh, and I have no intentions on on editing a video um, or using a real microphone or any of that, but hopefully we'll learn some cool stuff here. So uh, for those of you that don't know, CodePen is like a website that uh, I actually work for, but it allows you to just build stuff using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, like I built a bunch of stuff on here, uh, and it, you just use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, share it, people can see your code, um, and it's a fun little community for building stuff with code. Um, so to get started, uh, we are going to build a new pen. Um, and a pen on CodePen is a thing with code. And you program whatever you want to build and you use the editors and it's pretty straightforward. Um, and you'll get what I mean in a second. So all we care about right now is JavaScript. Um, right now, I have Babel enabled, um, which allows us to write in modern JavaScript, and uh, the the code will get um, compiled down into JavaScript that all browsers can read and not just modern browsers. Um, I'm going to save this as private, and I am going to add the Tone.js library, um, which we can easily do on CodePen without having to research what that link is. So we've added Tone to our project, and I can hit Run. And we can see we loaded Tone.js. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a console.clear, which will, every time we hit Run or Command-Shift-5, uh, it'll clear our console, um, which will keep it clean, and we don't have to keep hitting that button over here. Um, so it, when we hit run, you'll see it should clear. There we go. Um, so since we've included Tone.js, it gives us access to the Tone object. And the Tone object contains all sorts of things for making noise and, and modifying sound. Um, the main object we care about uh, for this video's purposes is the synth object. And we can go to uh, Tone's documentation here and look at their different synth objects. We're going to use the, the default basic synth object for now. Um, and it looks scary at first, but actually it's pretty simple. And I'll show you how simple it is in a second. Um, but on uh, Tone's docs, we can literally find anything we could ever want to know about how to make sound using Tone.js. Um, so to start things off, uh, we are going to create a synth. Um, and the way we do that is new tone.synth. And um, this in and of itself won't do anything uh, other than instantiate a, a, a new synthesizer. Um, a synth you can think of as like a keyboard that makes noise, except there is no keyboard, unless you want to make one with code. Um, the first thing we need to do is plug in this keyboard that we've created. Um, if you think about like an electric guitar, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sound until it's plugged into an amp. And so the way that we do that uh, is we do two master, and this connects it to the master audio context. Um, the reason why you need to do something like this um, is because, for example, if you had a uh, if you had an electric guitar and you wanted to plug it into different effects before it goes into the amplifier to change the sound, um, you want the ability to do that. But for our purposes, we're just plugging straight into our amplifier in this case. Um, uh, the next thing we can do is we can make it make sound, and to do that we use this method called trigger attack release. Um, they have a couple different methods. You can trigger attack, you can trigger release. 
or you can trigger attack release. Um, we're using trigger attack release because for our purposes here, we are just going to play a note for a period of time and have it kill itself when it's done. Um, so the first parameter is the note you want to play. So for us, we're gonna play the C4, which is the fourth octave, um, which is middle C on the piano. And then we're gonna have it play for an eighth note. And so when we hit run here, we will hear a C4 for an eighth note, and we're done. That's it. That's all. No, I'm just kidding. We're not. We're not going to. We're, we're not going to end things there. Um, but that's how simple it is to make noise in a web browser. Anyone could code this. You don't need to know anything to like just make this. You just need to look it up. Um, that's pretty cool. So. What we want to do here is do something more interesting than that because that was pretty boring. Um, so what we'll do is we'll build an array of notes. Um, I'm going to do a C4 and then an E4 and then a G4. That's a C major chord. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate it here and just change these to fives. So now we'll have six notes C4, E4, G4, C5, E5, G5. Um, I'm also going to uh, need uh, an index to keep track of which note we're on. And what we want to do is we want to make a loop that plays each one of these notes, then starts over and plays them again. Now, if you're familiar with programming, you know that we have like for loops and while loops. Um, in JavaScript, we also have things like set interval and request animation frame. Um, but tone actually gives us something that allows us to schedule things based on like musical time. Um, and that can be found in the transport, which is this great big object that handles everything related to time. It handles the tempo. Um, you can add swing, which is basically da 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 instead of dun dun dun. Um, so what we're going to do here is we are going to copy this. We want to schedule a repeat, which basically is like doing a um, request animation frame or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to dump this in here. I'm going to change this to be our more modern syntax that makes us feel better and since we are really strange people we are going to make sure those are single quotes uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to just call a function called repeat and we're going to pass in the time um, and so right now uh, what's happening behind the scenes uh, is there's this value um, and right now it's set to 120 beats per minute. So this is what the default is for the beats per minute. Um, and we're calling that every eighth note, which means it's really uh, 240 ticks per minute since a beat is a quarter note and we're doing an eighth note. Um, but the point is uh, there's a master beats per minute tempo um, that's already set. And we could see that if we just wanted to by doing console.log tone.transport.bpm. We should investigate our errors here because we aren't thinking. Oh, this is probably driving some of you nuts. We need an equal sign. Um, yeah, so here's our uh, BPM object, and our value is hidden behind a bunch of stuff, so I'm just gonna do tone.transport.bpm.value. 120, there it is. There's the 120 beats per minute that is our default, and I, am, before we get too crazy, am going to just comment that guy out. Um, so, What's happening is that BPM is influencing the rate at which this schedule repeat is going to be called. Um, the reason time is important to us is because that's tone's sense of time. Like it's, it's mark of time. Um, and what we want to do is we want to pass that time in 
uh, when we tell it to play a sound um, so that it happens on time and that if there's any lags, um, it'll, it'll make sure it plays everything. Um, and so we've created this repeat function right here inside of schedule repeat. Uh, so let's actually tell the world what that is. So repeat, and it's going to take a time parameter. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to find our note. And our note is going to be notes index. So that's going to start at zero. So that'll be the C4. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this right here. And instead of C4, we're just going to say note. And here is where that time comes into play. We will pass in our time. And then we'll say index plus plus. Now, some of you might already see a problem here, which is that when we increase the index, there will come a point at which it is greater than the amount of things we have in notes. Um, so if we want it to start back over when it gets to the end of our notes, uh, all we need to do is modulo notes.length. And what that will do is when it gets to the end, it'll start over at zero. Um, all right, so we are not totally done yet. We need to actually start the transport. So we've scheduled this repeat to happen at a point in time. And now we need to actually start the timeline, so to speak. And so that's tone.transport.start. And for sake of our sanity, I'm going to uh, set timeout. And it's going to just be a function here. After five seconds, that will tone.transport.stop. And so this will stop it after five seconds. Um, so when we hit run, there's our uh, notes, uh, our arpeggio. Um, so I'm going to clean this up just a tad, and now I'm going to change this BPM to 90, just so that we can hear this here. So it's slower. Um, that's just an example of what that does, uh, which is super fascinating, I know. Um, we have a bunch of other stuff we can change here. So if we go to the synth, synth, and we look at the properties, we can change the oscillator type. Um, so right now it's set to be a triangle. And if we look at the envelope here, actually it's not envelope, it's oscillator. Uh, if we go down to the oscillator, Envelope is something else. Um, it, it, this allows us to basically change different wave types. So, for example, if we want this synth to not be a triangle sound wave, we could do synth dot oscillator dot type equals uh, sine. We can hit run here. And we have a different. Uh, we have a different uh, wave happening. Um, another thing that I will show you before we end this is that what we can also do is create a uh, gain. Um, so right now we're going straight into the amplifier and what we can do is do a new tone dot gain and we could just set it from zero to one. So I'm gonna just set it to 0 0.5. Um, and so what, what this will do is we will connect to the gain, which will cut the volume in half, then connect the gain to our amplifier. Um, so to do that, we do gain.2 master, then we do synth.connect gain. So our synth is going into our gain, which cuts our volume in half. Our gain is going into our amplifier. And so now when we run this, we will have a quieter sound. And we could make that even quieter. And yeah, 
So there's all different sorts of things you can plug in. You could do different effects, delay effects, reverb effects. Um, you can build a poly synth, which allows you to play more than one note at once, um, like chords. Um, there's just, there's really no limit. And so I just wanted to give a brief introduction into how Tone.js works, how easy it is to get started, uh, specifically on something like CodePen to just start making noise with a web browser. Um, and then maybe I'll end up throwing together some more videos going into more detail and how you can build some like more insane things um, using, using uh, Tone.js. Um, all right, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and just keep coding. It gets easier.